So good afternoon, uh, everybody, and uh, welcome. This is my uh, amazingly my second talk at DEF CON. It's, it's uh, such a privilege and honor to talk once at DEF CON, but twice. It's just uh, unbelievable. So uh, before I continue, I'd like to thank my colleagues, Kerry Coburn, uh, John Waxmonski, Mike Leonard, uh, Ken, and uh, yeah, the, the rest of the P2P team that are here helping out. Uh, I, I couldn't have done this presenta presentation without them. So I'm going to do the obligatory who am I? So uh, my name is Paul Brownridge. Obviously, I'm, uh, I started my, my working life as an engineer in Cape Town in South Africa. I uh, OT background, uh, and then just by a series of accidents, found myself into uh, working in cybersecurity. So I do a lot of OT testing, maritime, IoT, APS, a lot of interesting stuff. I mean, uh, we do a lot of interesting stuff. So um, quite topical, probably something that's been talked about maybe five or six times at this conference is the MV Dolly. Is it hacked? Well, there's a lot of lot of opinion on, on the internet, right? Everybody is an armchair warrior at the end of the day. They, uh, they reckon, yes, it was hacked, definitely. It's deep state, etc. Other people say, no, not possible. I think that once you understand how ships are architected, do you understand actually that maybe the answer is somewhere in the middle? And uh, what I'm going to be doing is going to be going through the individual systems um, examining some of the, uh, the the attack surface and maybe some of the threat vectors and that. So really sort of like a high uh, level view of the, the systems on the ship. So to be quite honest, you know, before I came across this picture, I didn't know how much damage this ship actually done, which is quite scary, isn't it? I mean, that is a mess or, or somebody's not getting, getting the bonus this year. And uh, okay, so let's start with the main engines. So. The picture that you see over there, that is uh, a typical engine on a container ship. It's one engine. It differs from other engines that you used to in that it's supported by ancillary uh, systems. So there's pumps, for instance. Um, they, they handle the cooling, the fuel injection, etc. And these are handled by uh, generators in redundant arrays. Um, the generators uh, will power the steering without any power. Obviously, there's no steering, uh, and this is all organized by the power management system, so the PMS. Uh, that is, in turn, uh, managed by a network control system called the Integrated Alarm and Monitoring System, and then you have these multiple systems all over the ship that tie into it by a series of uh, either serial connections, either IP over serial, etc. We'll, we'll take a look at those in, in turn. Um, and of course, we've got the steering controls, right? We have the controls at the helm, uh, tied into the autopilot. And it's important to note that at this time, there is a physical switch that if anything goes wrong, you can turn that off. It's, it's as we go through these slides, this is something to note all the time that there's always going to be somebody in charge, uh, which is really important. Um, so there we go, the helm, the steering gear, the steering flat, which is basically a, uh, a, a deck that you can steer the ship from. Uh, any emergency situation, you can manually control the ship uh, in case anything goes wrong. All right. Then, of course, these systems tie into the rudder and the steering gear. As I mentioned in the previous slide, it's all tied in with the generators. So, this is you can see the picture on the left hand side. This is what you see in the movies, right? With the uh, the telegraph, you know, full steam ahead. Uh, but on the right hand side, this is the 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 more, more modern derivation of that. It's important to note that uh, a lot of these systems are um, tied down to certain revs so that it doesn't cause any uh, potentially dangerous vibrations on the ship, or um, sometimes it's also economics as well, because a ship will have a most economical, uh, I can say, um, revolution band, and they'll be tied into that. What's important to note that at any time of this, yet again, the captain can override any of these controls. So. So if there's a blackout on the ship, like what happened to Emmy Dolly, right? What are the procedures to restart this? Well, normally it's as simple as pressing a single button on the screen, but how do we do this when the rest of your ship does not have any, any power, right? So uh, it could involve using controls local to the generator start. So you could send your engineers down there, um, waiting for it to come up to speed, and then uh, closing breakers, for instance. And this is important to note because it's a process like any, uh, any OT system, any refinery, any chemical processing plant, everything works in a sequence. There's no just like one button, bam, it comes on. It, it, it's a series of, of, of processes. 
Um, sometimes you have manual management of the system will need to be performed. Uh, as a load is drawn by the the, uh, the ship, this would take 30 seconds normally, but you, you never know, and it might take several crew. But according to regulations, your emergency emergency generator should come on 45 seconds. But as we all know, in the real world, right, that hardly ever happens. I mean, that's an ideal state. So what could take, or is supposed to take 45 seconds, could take minutes. And if you are in the open sea uh, with a blackout and your ship is coasting, that is not a problem, right? But if you're approaching a bridge or a, uh, a built-up system, just 45 seconds or even sometimes if these systems don't start, a minute or two minutes can, st can uh, end in emergency like we saw in the, in the previous slide. So, what triggers a blackout? Well, bad fuel, yeah. Some of the cheapy fuel that, that you pick up these ports, right? Ship rolling, um, some of the, the heavy seas uh, can cause loss of pressure and cause the, the, the ship to blackout. Could have electrical problems, bad maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it, it's long. It, it's the older the ship, the worse these problems get. And cruise ships do black out. 2013 Carnival Triumph was out of, uh, out of commission for a few days due to battery, you know, the battery power failed several times. In 2019, the Viking Sky uh, generator was out for service maintenance. Yet again, we see this. So it's totally possible that these circumstances can exist. Uh, that a, a, uh, a ship can black out. So, like I said, you know, all the uh, the armchair warriors in the uh, on the internet saying it was uh, it was a hack. Well, we'll see. So let's take a look at the autopilot. So as we go, as we saw a, uh, a slide uh, early on, the autopilot can uh, connect directly to the engine, but it's always possible to disconnect the autopilot and steer manually. As I said, this is very important to know. So there's always a human in the loop. Um, but if we're taking a look at the, the threat landscape, we're finding more and more that these systems are connected up to the internet. So firmware, downloads, and that. And then if we sort of break it down, we can see that it almost becomes like a sort of a supply chain attack. But then you'd have to compromise the, uh, the, the firmware suppliers. You have to uh, sign the firmware. So yes, possible, but very unlikely, unless you really expend a lot of energy going back and, and hacking this bio. Propulsion, really connected to the internet. These are big, big, chunky machines. Um, this is your typical OT versus IT segregation at the end of the day. Um, attacks unlikely, and if it did happen, the bridge could manually override. Yet again, somebody, a person's in the loop. The power systems, frequently network connected, fair enough, right? And this is one of those, those uh, those situations are just becoming more and more connected as the years go by, but attack is unlikely in an event happening, the bridge could manually overwrite. Yet this recurring theme is that there's always somebody that can change the ship or it's going to be on bridge, etc. So conclusion, yes, ships can be hacked, but it takes time. It's a manual process. Oops, see Daisy. And uh, was the MV Dolly hacked? Well, no, it's practically impossible. I mean, it's possible, but it's very, very improbable. You need a large amount of time over there. Uh, you need to know the systems. You basically need to need engineer, tons of social, social engineering. So for an armchair hacker from, oh, I don't know, your nation state somewhere, like hacking into the ship, very improbable. Uh, unfortunately, polarized views from uninformed commentators do not help. Uh, you need to understand how these ships are architected. So um, last year, I had about 150 slides and I managed to get to 120 of them before uh, time got called. Um, so I blasted through 30. So I'm going to do a recap of what I did last year. And uh, yeah, so this is the systems recap. Um, the integrated control and monitoring system. This is the brains and the eyes of the ship. This uh, controls the PLCs in the engine room, uh, rider control, power management. Uh, these extremely, extremely important piece of equipment. Uh, without it, the ship cannot operate. So from an attacker's point of view, this is a uh, high value target. So it's something that we, we take a look at all the time while we're busy pen testing ships. Um, this is the Ectus, this is the charting system. This is re these running redundant arrays. Um, and basically, as you can see, there's a map on there. It tells you where you are uh, in on the ocean. Um, obviously, without it, uh, the 
the captain could not know where he's supposed to be going and the crew do not know where they're going or where they are. So if these systems go down, then the ship has got to stop. But failing that, particularly with some of the older ships, we got some old school maps, right? You can see the drawers over there. Those are actually all charts from uh, the oceans around the world. And these get delivered by hand whenever there's an update. So it, it's, it's quite... Um, it's quite reassuring that you still have these manual methods of, of the ship knowing where they are at the end of the day. Safety management system. So this is a separate room, usually near the bridge, that um, whenever there's an emergency situation on board, uh, it is organized over here. So this is very interesting from attacker's point of view because it has tendrils into the rest of the ship. It is... Um, from the ICMS all the way to the Ectus, um, pressurized doors, uh, CCTV, fire alarm systems. This is so important at the end of the day uh, because you basically can coordinate like somebody like, um, uh, like with the lifeboats, etc. Uh, it's it's something to note as well that um, as the crew is running around trying to organise a uh, emergency situation, they can use these iPads or these window systems to to log in and take a look at what's going on at the same time. It's an idealized version of the IT versus OT system of ship. We've got the internet coming down by VSAT. Into the core, we've got the corporate network. Because as usual, you've got your bean counters uh, on the ship, your accountants and your, your people. Then you've got third parties, something like, uh, it's like point of sales, etc. And your crew, because obviously, you know, you need to provide Netflix, etc. for your crew. And that's split up into Wi-Fi and wired. You can see the line down the middle. You see the bridge and the engine, engine room. And this is what you want in the real world, but it doesn't always work out. Because, yeah, we'll see a little bit later. This is really how it looks like. It's a mess. So it comes on the VSAT. Uh, into the core network and then the RDP, not their protocol, but remote distribution points. And uh, these are basically just big chunks of Cisco equipment, we can see in the next slide. And these are broken down via VLAN trunks into cabin switches. This is basically what it looks like. This is on the ship. So you, you anybody who's been in a, in a data center, any on-prem stuff, it looks exactly the same. It's all off the shelf stuff. It's, it's nothing um, bespoke for the maritime industry. Breaking it down further, um, we have the VLAN trunking down to uh, the cabin switches, and we have it split off into TVs, VoIPs, uh, light, Wi-Fi, CTV, TV. The, the most important to, 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 to remember on all this is it comes down over a single connection, right? And as an attacker, that is very interesting. So, and we've got the propulsion system. This is Azipod. Uh, in the olden days, you used to have the, you know, the big rudders that used to you have the prop wash, uh, but now these are uh, independent systems that you can control, control from the ICMS. And uh, they're actually the recent ones that we tested are controlled by Wi-Fi, just normal 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, right? Which is quite scary at the end of the day. This is not even dedicated ca cables at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah. So one of the things when, when we test ships is we walk around, and this, uh, this goes back to my, my early days in refinery, is you see pipes everywhere, you see cables going everywhere, you don't know where everything is. So you spend such a large amount of time chasing stuff down. And because ships have this churn of engineers, etc., a lot of people don't know where the systems do, or even sometimes they leave the systems on because they're too afraid to turn them off because they don't know what it does, but they don't want to turn it off at the end of the day, right? So in case something goes wrong, it's like, okay, cool. So you have systems just running like this constantly. So we knew there was something coming in that monitored the fuel uh, consumption. But we didn't know where it was, right? So eventually we used to open up the panels and we, we put it inside and we found this little, little bugger over here. This is like a rugged PC, it's a Windows-based PC. And, um, but we wanted to know more of what it did, right? So you can see on the, on the, on the side over there, there's a, uh, anybody here work with, with OT systems a lot, you'll recognize that, that little box over there. That's an IP to serial connector. So what it does, it takes IP, internet uh, protocol, then it, it changes it into um, serial, uh, a serial bus. Now, the thing is, when you work in OT at the moment, is 
these systems have been around for 30, 40 years, and they still operate on discrete systems. So this is why you have the IP2 serial. So we wanted to uh, model the, 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 the attack surface and that. So what we did is we took a look. So we knew that the IP2 serial was going to the bridge ICMS. This was going to the, uh, the charting system. So it would track where we were at a certain time from one distance to the next, but it was also talking to the PLCs on the, on, on the main engine. It was asking for revolutions a second, it was asking for maybe fuel consumption, and then it was, uh, it, it was doing some, some fancy mathematics and it was uh, predicting the fuel consumption. So there was a, but what we did is once we took a look at the IP serial connection going to the bridge, we noticed that instead of three wires, you can see there's two wires, there's the ground and one of the, the serial connections in there, we noticed that one of the, the wires was, was missing. So usually when you, when you have a serial to serial connection, you'll, you'll pull the, the PLC or the, the piece of equipment and it'll talk back to you. But that's how it would normally happen. But what we found is it was transmit only. So the piece of equipment was just taking pulling from the bridge, which is great. I mean, from attacker's point of view, there's nothing you can do. You can't inject anything down the line. Fantastic, right? But then, we started taking a look at the connection from the IP to serial to the PLC. And that was using Modbus. So now Modbus, five minutes? Seriously? All right. So it's using Modbus, right? And Modbus was, well, that went quickly, right? And Modbus is like a, uh, you have to call out to the piece of equipment for it to broadcast its value to you. So this is, this is um, interesting from attacker's point of view because now we have access to the machine so now we can inject values into the PLCs at the end of the day. And in terms of attack surface, this is very interesting to us. However, what was more interesting, forgive me, like I said, I got lots of slides, right? So what was more interesting, we took a look at the system and we noticed we had Team Viewer on there, right? So, yeah, yeah. I and mean, what was more amusing, even more amusing, was that the, the fact that the company actually had stopped paying for the service four years before, right? But they were too afraid to turn it off, like I was saying before. So you had a, a machine that was not uh, updated. It was still connected to the, the, the internet. You could potentially connect up to the PLC and ruin everything at the end of the day, right? So it was, we found this very amusing, uh, but it was good. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to blast through my slides again. No, I'm really sorry about this, guys, but, uh, uh, how many minutes? Three minutes? Two minutes? Ah, okay. Um, shit, okay. So, <laughs> I'm gonna blast my slides quick. Um, next year, when you come and see me talk, I'll do this properly, I'll do this first, so you know I can actually get through this the, the, this time. Um, basically, TLDR, we managed to compromise the thruster system from the, our cabins at the end of the day. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna run to the conclusion. Those are really interesting slides, aren't they? Sorry, guys. See team view again? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to hack it up. So, I actually had some stuff about regulation as well, but that's very boring. Nobody wants to go through that. Okay. Um, so, ships can be hacked, but it takes time and it takes present. One of the things that we noticed is that we have the advantage of when we're on the ship, we can talk to engineers, we can look at the documentation, right? We can see what's going on, we, we can run the lines. In an idealized world, right? Hackers are not gonna sit on the other side of the world, uh, go through the V-set, take over the vessel. It's not going to happen. Um, have a social engineering is still a, a, a factor. There's something to consider. Convergence and modernization often introduce, introduce new risk, and this is true because a lot of the time we're getting IP to serial. Before we had discrete systems. Now we have trunking, like we said before, and uh, uh, it's possible to RDP onto systems, etc. To team viewer, right? Uh, there's undocumented stuff everywhere. Right? This is one of the things when we, we test the ship. We have a little AP, um, AP monitoring, and the client or the, the vendor has installed so many access points, right, that the, 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 the client, the retesting, have no idea what the hell is going. So we would probably about six or seven undocumented APs on a ship at any one time, right? 
which is bonkers, right? Because I mean, all of these just bridge the man over there. It's like, yeah, it's it's yeah. So it's crazy, and uh, that's it. Thank you for coming to see my talk. <laughs>